uh, Expert Commission. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ostap Kryptik. My name is Ostap Kryptik. I'm a member of uh, uh, Public Oversight Council. I'm glad and happy to see you here in our meeting. To today, we have the extinguished guest here, representatives of uh, public uh, circles, both public and academic circles. I uh, let me introduce our participants today, and uh, and I will tell about the members of our members. So Mikhail Zhernako is a representative of uh, de jure. Uh, Mikhail Kubida is a uh, Igor the Center of Countering Political, of Center of Political and uh, Legal Reform, and the jury, uh, Mikhail Zhernakov. Uh, Lena Halushko represents the Center of Countering Corruption. Uh, also, we we have representatives of educational community, Serhii Kivit, and representatives of Ukrainian diaspora from Australia. From what? So, in what context we are working today, uh, Mr. Putin, the president of the president of Russian Federation, uh, actually voiced his his demands as for as for the event, and he threatened with war. And actually, at a counter decision of Bakhris summit back in 2008, so he urges the NATO to refuse the membership to both Ukraine and Georgia. So this is the moment of truth when Putin named the reason, uh, called the reason why did he attack Ukraine in order to to uh, restrain it from joining North, uh, North uh, Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization. So we have the Constitution of Ukraine, which states that uh, the aim and goal of our foreign policy is joining both European Union and NATO, and we have the summit, NATO, uh, NATO summit in Brussels decision. And also we have the decree of the President of Ukraine, which adopted the annual national plan and uh, Commission of Ukraine NATO, which did gets into details and describes in details so what Ukraine actually has to do in order to achieve NATO standards. So the first thing the first I'd like to give the floor to to our analytic, to chief analytic Dmitro Bibik, who uh, during his work in Ukrainian in Ukraine had personal first hand experience with uh, imp implementation of uh, uh, annual national plan and he is a really great expert on that and after his presentation how it is drafted and how it is being monitored the national annual plan we will uh, we will have a discussion which will be subdivided in two topics so the first which refers to the topics and priorities of national plan and the second one how do we assess the annual national plan? So uh, you have the flood metro. Distinguished colleagues, I'd like to to show the presentation and remind in general strokes without getting into meticulous details uh, how how the national annual plan is implemented and how it is being monitored and assessed. So uh, please uh, help me with the presentation and uh, display it for our viewers. Well, as you can just give me a second. Just a few technical moments, and we will move forward. I, I would ask some assistance of uh, getting back to the previous slide. Unfortunately, I don't have my remote control with me today.
Yes, now, now, it's, now, now it's good. Please, next slide. Here, as you can see from the slide, we represented the process of planning and the process of monitoring and implement of the implementation of annual national plan in this in this scheme. And as you can see, this is it's quite complex process. Planning is going consistently. So it's like in a series of consistent actions, subsequent actions, and the planning of a national annual plan starts before before the year when it is drafted, and monitoring and evaluation goes concurrently. And drafting of the program and monitoring and evaluation, they all are described in a national plan, which was adopted by uh, the degree of the president. And the last issue was adopted was was adopted this year. So please, next slide. So the process of planning starts with. Uh, so the central executive bodies, they issue proposals to the project of a and P in, um, and also commission on the coordination of Euro-Atlantic integration of Ukraine, draft recommendation as for the strategic goals uh, uh, and reforms, and, and, and as uh, for the results of the assessment uh, for the previous years, it gives its recommendations for European Office of Coordination and uh, Office on Euro, uh, European and Euro-Atlantic Integration. Next, uh, using these uh, recommendations, uh, central uh, executive bodies, they form their own draft propositions and pass them to the governmental office uh, of Euro-Atlantic and European integration. So the next stage, uh, the governmental office consolidates all these proposals and ensures the uh, harmonization of these proposals with all the stakeholders and uh, performs uh, the translation of it into English. And uh, before the 15th of October, uh, the year which it is previous to the plan. This information is uh, submitted for uh, for the analysis to the uh, Secretariat, uh, International Secretariat, and uh, and to the Commission of European uh, and Euro Atlantic Integration. The next step. We have modified proposals, which are consolidated by governmental uh, office of Euro-Atlantic integration, and it is drafted into and it is incorporated into annual national plan. And before the first of November, it is submitted to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Next, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, finalizes existing uh, pro uh, pro existing program and according to the recommendations which have been received from the international secretariat of nato again it is approves it uh, with all the central uh, executive branches and before the 20th of december it is supposed to submit the project of ANP together with uh, their project of uh, uh, the president of Ukraine uh, to the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine. The cabinet of ministers of oh, ministers of Ukraine also consolidates everything, and before the thirty first of uh, of uh, January, it is supposed to submit it to the president for endorsement. The project of annual uh, national annual plan and and the project of uh, the presidential decree. So the president is supposed to sign it, but 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 well, there are no uh, some established time frame for signing by the president. And after the president signs that, uh, cabinet of minister is, is supposed to uh, to include into their planning all the events which are included, incorporated into annual national plan. As for the monitoring, please uh, give us the next slide. So monitoring is conducted systematically uh, during the year. Uh, 
So all uh, the bodies of executive power, state bodies, which uh, are developers of those suggestions and proposals, they form uh, their information and two times per year, so quarterly till uh, the 20th till the 25th uh, day of every uh, quarter and uh, twice twice a year till the 25th uh, of June and 25th of December. All information uh, is submitted with the indicators of, uh, of uh, carrying out the whole program in general and every year before the 15th of uh, September uh, they have a consolidated analytical comp uh, compressed analytical uh, report uh, as for uh, the implementation of annual national plan for the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine so before the 15th of January uh, of the current year the Ministry of Foreign Affairs together with the Office of Euro-Atlantic Integration they consolidate all the information and it is supposed to and to supposed to submit all the report to the cabinet of minister of ukraine uh, next slide please and the cabinet of ministers uh, before the 31st of january is supposed to submit a consolidated report to to the president of ukraine together with suggestions and proposals as for the further development of uh, relations between nato and ukraine so this is our attempt to to to, to show you the whole process how the f how the program is being formed and drafted and uh, the next presentation will be devoted to a monitoring and assessment and in, if you have any questions you will have the possibility to ask thank you very much metro for such a detailed uh, insight of uh, of how our government, our state is planning our integration into NATO, and what are the stages on this process on the way, and what are the critical milestones, critical points, milestones, and we're also going to discuss the some issues how we can improve this process and this procedure in general. And now I'd like to give the floor to. Stefan Romani, the first vice president of the World Congress of Ukrainians, who who is uh, online with us from Australia, who is live from Australia. Uh, we are really happy to see you with us today. Thank you very much for uh, the attention which Ukraine diaspora pays to um, to our way to NATO. And I know that the World Congress of Ukrainians is doing a great job in this regard. And thank you again. You're welcome. So the Congress of Ukrainians. And uh, I see that everything has been uh, represented to the office of the president, to the cabinet of the ministry. As you know, we have created a working group. We asked our our public institutions from other countries and from other countries in order to make and exert influence in order to help in that process. And what what is going on on Putin's behalf and all his words and all his mechanism as for threatening and influencing this uh, the world, restraining the world, deter the world, and and saying like it's my way or highway, and we and we would we have to influence also at ukrainian congress of ukrainians will create its own working group in those countries in countries nato members where we have our members we will definitely influence in order not to surrender not to give up on the way especially in australia so we are not part of nato we also addressed the ministry of uh, Australian government in, in order to continue with the sanctions, in order to put pressure on Russia. And next Monday, we will we will we, we will have coordination with other structures. So we we engage the group which is called Pet uh, Five Eyes, uh, it's English speaking world. So it it should do its best in order to make this pressure too so we shouldn't cave in and ukrainian congress of ukrainians will uh, will 
try to demand from the states where we have our representatives so they would influence as well. Thank you very much, Stefan. I know that uh, it's deep night. And thank you very much for joining us and for all the work you are doing so the world can hear about the Ukraine, the situation in Ukraine, and it's striving to join NATO. And now we are going back to our discussion. Our uh, according to the topics which I already declared. So how do we assess the implementation of annual national plan and what priorities do we incorporate in the, in the next uh, annual national plan for 2020? And now, I, at first, before we give the floor to uh, our guest, I'd like to have a video of uh, Volodymyr Ohriskov, Minister of uh, uh, our foreign affairs 2007-2008 with our constituent meeting from our previous meeting. Uh, maybe I can ask our assistants to do that so we can see that short video. So we are talking about right things, but also we have to stay firmly on the ground. So what is annual national plan? It's a basket which all the ministers put everything what they want with, without any regard to the real goals uh, envisaged by this plan. So when you look into that plan, you will see many things which are only tacked to have only tactical significance, which have nothing to do with the real plan of actions for Ukraine to really join NATO and and uh, and for receiving a road map to NATO. And we are going to talk about implementation of this plan. This plan, uh, so this plan is created in a way in order to become a road map for advancing Ukraine to NATO. And uh, not the way like it is uh, drafted today and uh, events and measures which we have today it's 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 all it's all about window dressing and waffling about so my proposal is not waiting for the next uh, mom may when we will be uh, given other uh, uh, measures which have nothing to do with the real um, annual membership plan and to maybe elaborate ourselves those measures and actions and suggest them to the government and not having all those things which ministries just put in that basket. So, so we prepare an annual national plan, and uh, every ministry has uh, has ta was has been tasked with uh, preparing their own uh, proposals. And uh, well, they don't do that. What they are supposed to do, they they just draft everything irrelevant. And uh, people who are doing that actually are not personally interested in doing it in a qualitative way. So also, I'd like uh, to reiterate that Ukraine cannot be discussed without participating uh, in So we will put some pressure on Congress and Senate in, in order not to cave in, because we can become a victim. And you, again, we can see the situation when Ukraine loses. So this is international pressure, which is really good tool. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I believe that this pressure actually brings results when 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 we had uh, uh, top officials of the United States uh, said they, they, they reiterated uh, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine participating in, in the talks. And now we are transferring to our discussion. But before we started, we'd like to suggest four, four ideas for joint actions, which we can discuss us only in the context of evaluation and setting the priorities. 
So we, in the apparatus of uh, Public Oversight Council, we uh, devised uh, four uh, directions. First is uh, to suggest the Cabinet of Ministers to have a public report on implementation of ANP for 2021. Second, to suggest the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine to consider the ac experts' proposals from POC, and included into uh, the implementation of uh, annual national plan for 2022, which will be adopted uh, at uh, the end of January next year, and to engage the pool of experts in order to monitor uh, to monitor the implementation of the process uh, during the next year. We, the process will start in February, and also to consider the proposals as for the provisions of uh, development of uh, and drafting of national annual plan. And uh, last year, we faced the situation when ANP was uh, launched in May, but the Cabinet of Ministers adopted provisions only in June, which actually caused uh, that we lost half a year uh, on our in your integration way. So how can we put these days and have them on a schedule? So I would invite our talk Igor Koliushko, uh, the president of uh, political and legal reform, and who is also a member of our uh, Public Oversight Council, uh, which uh, monitors uh, the implementation of ANP. I know, Ihor, that you have really uh, concrete suggestions as for an annual national plan and and for uh, its aspects. So uh, you have the floor, please. Uh, good uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation to take part in these talks. Well, and I, I'd like to start with some uh, general considerations first. I, I have never been a member of some talks and negotiations with the representatives of NATO as for deeply understand the specificity of this of this fear. Well, namely, I understand that the first thing you, Ukraine in the context of the integration into NATO is supposed to implement those things which are demanded and required by the members in action plan. And, and to read in all those annual national plans which we have been discussing right now this year, I, I'm paying my attention to uh, mostly a good provisions uh, which are for everything good against everything bad, as they say, but but I have really big doubts that all these provisions are meeting the requirements of the procedure of, uh, of uh, on our way to uh, NATO admission. When we draft this uh, national plan, there are a lot of provisions. We have a lot of provisions included, and they somehow disguise what is really a key critical issues which our partners need to recognize us as a full-fledged uh, future full-fledged member of NATO. This is a really important issue and we have to raise it but it's really so this is my hypothesis so I'm not really competent in order to give recommendations as to what should be included and what should be excluded from the national uh, annual national plan. This, this was the first. The second, uh, considering the plan which was represented today, as for the algorithm of how that annual national plan is implemented, is uh, processed, and and I'd like to issue a hypothesis that it's quite destructive algorithm, which nevertheless I know is quite traditional for our government. And we we usually like to have things done for the next year when they put uh, when, when they give that information to the ministers and request uh, feedback from the ministries. Ministries usually do not understand what should they do. They, they, they just send everything they have and then people receive, especially in the Secretariat of the Cabinet of Ministers and in our office, in our governmental office of European integration, we, we receive huge amounts of information and sometimes we don't have time uh, 
uh, and uh, opportunity to process it all in order to single out the, the, the main structure and submit them later as a maximum efficient proposals in the best possible format then that's why we see i i know that as for the intentions of our government to reform the state management is uh, European integration, but we have a lot of lists, huge plans, and a lot of efforts are applied to monitor them. And later, at the end, we have like a final report saying 46 or 51 percent has been implemented and other percentage. So. It, it, it looks like uh, the percentage is quite good, but that percentage doesn't uh, give us an answer. So how did we get closer to our goal? Or, or, or maybe we are still staying at a starting point, and this percents usually include some not really important issues, and maybe they, have, they are not relevant to achieving the goals, but the key issues are not addressed. In, in the process of implementation of annual national plan. This is the second aspect. So what I would suggest here, if we can, in general, such documents should be prepared at one center. Yes, it can ask for the information indefinitely from all uh, the stakeholders, but then that plan should be based mainly uh, and uh, it should be prepared and drafted by one group of authors and then it should be approved and uh, maybe to have some amendments later but uh, such documents uh, we uh, should should be developed by a um, uh, thought tank and uh, only those key things should be included in that document and at the end the report can explain why that was implemented and that part of the of the document was not implemented so that's how i see that our traditional bu bureaucracy our bureaucratic catacombs caves where our documents go they lead to to the fact that the just the content is sometimes lost or often lost so in the third when we talk about the direction which i which i can engage in especially in the state management system it is as far as i understand the program of closing uh, in progressing to the NATO admission consists of two parts. The first part is uh, expert part, which uh, concerns uh, defense issues, security issues. The second part, as we can call it, it's a generally democ democratic and legal issues. So the country which is uh, uh, which is joining NATO is is not is not supposed to be only militarily developed, but also it should be uh, a country with. Uh, 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 strong economy with a rule of law and that plan is much bigger more comprehensive than just the military and security issues so what can con concerning those additional questions and provisions for example strategic goal uh, 1.2 as for the improvement of state management system um, I don't understand why, but it starts with a countering corruption. Yes, it's important, but as for the capability of governing, governance is not the first priority issue. If we don't have strategic uh, guidance, strategic vision, and, f and shaping the policy, so any any uh, any actions uh, aimed at countering uh, corruption won't bring any results. It's like fighting uh, corruption. It can be compared to the to the absence of some leakage in a fuel system. So um, sealing sealing that leakage point can save us some fuel, but the car won't go for long. And uh, and shaping the policy and capability of the government to develop strategic goals and to achieve them. 
So to my b belief, our Ministry of Defense is not reformed accordingly and is not capable of shaping the policy in all the spheres where it is important for the Ministry of Defense. And today they have uh, one directorate of uh, policy, that's how it is called, uh, directorate of uh, pol foreign policy. But when, but, but if this policy is not structured, it brings to chaos, it leads to chaos or to prioritizing something which they understand better or maybe they're interested more but other issues which are supposed to develop in parallel uh, they are neglected so no one pays attention to them this uh, these are some regularities of uh, of uh, working processes that's why the ministry of defense is supposed to have at least four or five directorates which can share the directions of uh, defense policy. One, for example, can be dealing with uh, strategy of development of armed forces of Ukraine and uh, setting the tasks uh, for the others. So what is important for the development of the uh, armed force? So answer the question, so what they should be our armed forces and what do they need? The second directorate should be dealing with uh, shaping the policy as for um, as the personnel I'm talking only about human resources, so that's what in English is called policy. There are some structural <coughs> units which implement those things, their, their level, and uh, de deliver everything according to uh, the manning and, uh, and training about the policy itself, the strategies for the policy. We see that the, the, the current situation is insufficient and the third director should deal with the policy as for the procurement of uh, arms and ensuring that armed forces Ukraine have everything they need in terms of arms so I believe that economies, economies should engage in this so this is economic uh, issue and obviously one more directorate the fourth one should be dealing with the policy as for as for our capability in inform in information warfare in reconnaissance intelligence and uh, everything which relates to the uh, defense complex in general all these tasks for example in annual national plan I do not see, and maybe maybe uh, the authors believe that it's not a priority. But I I believe if we do not have a good think tank and institutional mechanism for that brain, kind of brainstorming and uh, believing that some chaotic uh, moves even. If, if in, okay, they, they won't bring to results, they will bring to more chaos. Thank you very much. And that's all I wanted to add to that problem. Thank you very much, uh, Ihor. And uh, your thoughts are really interesting. As for the think tank, uh, this uh, policy is coordinated by Vice, uh, Vice Premier, but we have some nuances. As you have already mentioned, not all ministries uh, understand clearly what should they submit, and this is our public work uh, of public oversight council and uh, of our analytical uh, pool, which is coordinated by the metro. And we have we have remarks. We have, so we uh, submitted invitation to the Ministry of Defense. Unfortunately, they didn't join us, and we hope that uh, I believe that their representatives see what we stream right now, and and maybe 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 the situation will change due to uh, the change of uh, a change in high command and the change in distribution of of powers and authority uh, among the directorates which are designing directorate and it instills some hope and we are going to and we're giving the floor to our next uh, 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 
speaker, Mikhail Zhernakov, is the representative of the Jura NGO. So, uh, can you tell how can we evaluate ANP and how how what goals should we incorporate into that program for 2000? to 2020 and also uh, i'd like to hear your feedback as for the cabinet of minister uh, reporting publicly on annual national plan and last year and also we would like to suggest our, our own amendments to annual national plan preparation thank you very much for invitation for this discussion so it's a really interesting topic an important one I'd like to uh, I'd like uh, to talk uh, just in short statements, and uh, then so it beyond any doubt that Ukraine needs urgently uh, plan of reforms. There are no doubts about that. And how can that plan look like? As we we have already discussed with my colleagues that issue. So this plan should be clear, uh, to, it should include some goals and not, not 100 pages but less pages in order to, to monitor them more efficiently and it, it should be, so we can on the one hand, uh, monitor all the reforms which advance us to NATO and implementing all those reforms actually advancing to NATO. So all these goals and priorities should be monitored and what is the most important to see and hear the assessment not only on behalf of Ukrainian government and experts but also on behalf of NATO. So how does NATO see that? Uh, because what we are doing is implementing in reforms i'm going to talk about the aspect uh, the second aspect so uh, how this tool uh, empowers us for for our goal that's why i believe that anp is not in the way it's supposed to be because a lot has been mentioned that this is a huge document uh, which includes more than 100 pages this is inappropriate it means that we can talk about many things and many processes uh, conduct but uh, they are not efficient this number and second and this is the most important thing the assessment of implementation of ANP on behalf of NATO is not uh, practical and it kills ANP as a tool of advancing reforms uh, in Ukraine because on the one hand when we can say look uh, this is assessment of our partner of our ally and which uh, we tried to get admission to and that's what they believe and here we have to pay attention to these things and that we should amend and when this uh, assessment is not considered by anyone we as experts can do ourselves but we can do it without annual national plan so just uh, assessing how our forms are progressing there is not a big difference in this regard and and maybe the most important is so also it's a main thing so who designs this program and government actually and other institutions are doing that and they are supposed to do that and conduct reforms for example security uh, reform security service reform they design their own uh, tasks and the judicial part also decides for their own reforms so it is it is nonsense how can they uh, suggest ideas for reforming themselves and they, they just try to preserve the things as they are so I, I believe that we have to uh, change the priorities and in other uh, spheres there are some good uh, decisions but as for the judicial reform I would not like that part to be implemented because I, I really like it and close it to NATO but everything which is included in uh, judicial reform doesn't bring us closer to NATO actually 
actually it uh, uh, makes uh, the dreams of Pablo Vogue ill famous uh, judge Pablo Vogue who wrote an editorial uh, about the decreasing the number of the first of uh, of the first jurisdiction uh, courts without without any any selection process to employ judges without uh, any control on a public behalf and to let me quote optimization of the procedure of uh, uh, selecting uh, members to uh, local courts and one more uh, judicial ju judicial security and it's not a priority reform this is uh, in comparison to something which is supposed to be done in the judicial and uh, legal issues and what uh, expert pool believe it's absolutely different and the third institutional cap increasing of institutional capability uh, of the council of uh, uh, of legal reform because because this is given the first priority and uh, those judges during Maidan are uh, uh, unpunished, still unpunished, and that council actually uh, voted for uh, for firing this uh, this judge. But again, they they strive for uh, increasing the capability, even in the contents. Sorry, but what? What what they have uh, included in, in in those suggestions, I I I I'm really afraid that it won't get as closer to NATO admission because those uh, doc documents they they include some very highly compromising issues. And answering those questions, I would definitely believe that it would be feasible in one to 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 design that in one uh, better in one center to concentrate. To consider efforts uh, on uh, developing and drafting this document, it should be done in some measurable time, and preferably that we can hear the assessment on behalf of the NATO, and to discuss that, and to also uh, quote that in our in our work as for the advancement of uh, reforms in Ukraine, and it should be adequate uh, goals and tasks in what is going on and what is supposed to be done in judicial reform and judicial power. In sectors, so we have to engage not only governmental uh, governmental agencies, but also uh, public society experts. When when we talk about the things uh, of national annual national plan, it's not the instrument, not the tool which uh, actually getting us closer to NATO. So. And in the way it looks, and considering everything which has been mentioned, I believe that this document will definitely bring us closer to NATO, and and at least in in the part of uh, reforming the judges and advancing the reforms. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mikhailo. In this situation, we have a nuance uh, when we talk about annual national plan, Ukraine, NATO. We we have a final communique from this summit in NATO in Brussels. This is the format which which is approved by NATO, which is the mechanism of uh, cooperation between Ukraine and NATO, and it leads us to the members in action, pl action, members in action plan, and this is something which comes before, and we have some remarks. Uh, I, I won't take much of your time, but, I, but you said, uh, yes, the, this document is quoted, but this document so we are not in this in a situation when political uh, decision as for our admission to NATO is supposed to be made by NATO member countries, but they do not like to do that. Maybe this format is done uh, intentionally, deliberately, uh, in order to put us away from uh, joining NATO. And it is convenient for everyone, for our foreign parties, for our own government. So there are no commitments on the part of Ukraine and uh, other uh, partners. So it can it can go like in decades, this process of uh, getting closer to NATO. So maybe our joint efforts should be in delivering the information to uh, NATO countries that this tool is efficient and 
and we so we have two points of view so one is how to change the how to change the political will and political reality and how to change the formats the other side is more tactical how can we maximally uh, can use uh, ANP which which is uh, like fully on a paper which was back in 2014 when we had the uh, issue of association with the European Union which was now we have a constitution now we have a degree of the president uh, and uh, regulation of the cabinet of medicine so we have uh, some uh, uh, state policy and i agree in general and thank you for your remarks and thank you for your specific remarks on the judicial on the reform of judicial system it's really important and in this regard i see a great contribution on your part and also i see our role as a public oversight council as a platform where we can express that ideas consolidate them and communicate these ideas with the Ukrainian government and not only with the expert discussion but with uh, with the national advocacy thank you very much and i invite oleno alushko expert on the center of countering corruption so i would uh, ask you oleno to touch upon the issues how can we assess uh, annual national plan for the previous year and what priorities should we include in the next in the upcoming year and uh, how can we uh, make our government report on the implementation of ANP for the previous year and include us I mean uh, our expert pool of experts into the development of ANP for the, for the next year. And also, I'd like to have your feedback on Mikhail's words on how uh, efficient is ANP. Uh, good evening, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for invitation. Well, uh, talking, uh, talking at the very end of the event is the simplest way, because the most statements which I have prepared uh, have been voiced already, but also it is really difficult because we. I, 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 I'd like to add some value to this discussion. First, I I'm totally agree with uh, Stefan said at the very beginning about the successful Ukraine, which is uh, the biggest threat for Putin because it can uh, it can bring to irreversible democratic changes within the Russian society and the uh, movement of Ukraine to European and Euro uh, Euro Atlantic integration brings feasible results, tangible results for uh, advancing our own reforms, especially within the sphere of combating corruption. One remark, one small remark, actually it's not relevant to our discussion, but uh, there is one interesting moment which have been highlighted uh, by media experts who monitor uh, pro Kremlin propaganda. So they paid attention to the fact that their narratives, especially in the last, uh, in recent years, they have changed. They are not just openly pro-Russian. Instead, they if they attack reforms and reformers, and among reformers, they attack our international partners, trying to uh, to undermine their potential as for uh, uh, as for the other countries, European countries, United States, and others, and the potential of an, an capacity of NATO. And NATO is a kind of victim of propaganda during the last decade, not just. Uh, after the revolution of dignity but even before that so the cap the, potent the capacity of NATO for advanced reform is huge but support of NATO among the members of our society is on the rise and it continues to be like that especially having uh, Putin's uh, armed forces around our country so I am I agree that we need uh, more efficiently to intensify the use of existing tools as for uh, engaging NATO into uh, the advocacy of reforms and also to think about other tools as well. So uh, my colleagues put it right, uh, everyone mentioned that, uh, that ANP in the way it looks to die, it, it lacks a priority. So 100 priorities, it is not about priorities. It is uh, namely 
and it also was mentioned by public figures and uh, public officers. So the packet of reforms with five or seven key reforms, really difficult reforms, which would definitely give us a way uh, for the prospects to in to integration for the next period. And when we talk about the priorities, and NATO is quite actively communicating with their priorities, they are quite contrary. They say what are the priorities? So security uh, service reform. Uh, defense procurement reform implementation of that breakthrough law, which just stopped short or fell short of some uh, by laws which were not adopted. And also uh, NATO representatives was that they, what they understand as anti-corruption reform and judicial reform, because they are really important steps which Ukraine is supposed to take on its way to Euro Atlantic on the way to Euro Atlantic integration. When we talk about uh, reform of security service of Ukraine, so uh, stop. Uh, let me answer your question. How would I would uh, evaluate that the implementation of this program? At first, let's make a step backwards. And as uh, Mikhail, I'd like to tell the priorities uh, which are included in ANP for the reforming. So it's development of normative base, legal normative base. So the 22nd year is a deadline. So this uh, draft uh, bill is already in the parliament and uh, it passed the first reading. So it's not relevant. The next implementation of mechanism of efficiency and optimizing uh, security service, which do not need any amendments. I don't understand what does it mean at all. So uh, management within the system of uh, security service of Ukraine, creating the system of material and non-material social guarantees for motivation of young employees. Not even a word about the stripping uh, the security service of investing Investigating it in the economic part and uh, law enforcement, uh, economic crimes and law in, and re, and repeating the functions of uh, law enforcement function. Uh, not a word about the public oversight of the security service about uh, the downsizing the security service force. So all those things which I have uh, uh, voiced after reading that annual national plan. These are priorities which are beyond the NATO. They communicate. We are communicated as uh, priorities for the reforms, which are supposed to be implemented in some spheres. The especially very sensitive spheres, we can see, uh, we can uh, we can see some discrepancies, some obvious discrepancies between the urgent tasks and goals and priorities issued by NATO and those things which I include in the program, so prioritizing, so singling out the most important aspects and tasks, strategic goals, as well as, well, namely prioritizing the tasks is the key issue, is the key task, which, which can be done in order to to get a better situation in the program, improving the program. So public monitoring, I'm totally agree with everything Mikhail said. It's very important, not only the report on the part of Ukrainian government and the, uh, and the same kind of report on the part of uh, NGOs, Ukrainian NGOs. This is actually is a good step forward that uh, we have such initiative on the part of advocacy group, which monitors this crucial task. It's a huge task, but also if you have such monitoring and to be to have power to be public on the way of on the part of NATO, it would definitely help us as uh, public representatives who can use that e e tool uh, for advocacy tasks for convincing the politicians uh, to conduct these reforms. So public communication between NATO. And, cons uh, and advisory and mission of European Union, United States, as for the priorities of security service reform, it actually helped us with, uh, with the achievements which we got in, in this regard, reforming the security service of Ukraine. And also agreed to Mikhail in the part 
uh, of uh, re reform of courts. So he, uh, he explained how is it reformed, and we didn't see any participation of uh, public advocacy in reforming and shaping it. And the key moment here, which is lacking, is a comprehensive aim. So that would be really efficient in advancing reform because that will be like a light at the uh, end of the tunnel. It would be it would be the cancelling of a visa trips to European Union, and 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 also the plan of uh, of a membership membership in action plan that would definitely help uh, for the advocacy of reforms. And when we talk about the priorities within the sphere of combating corruption, and NATO reiterated many times that combating corruption is in one block as a rule of law and democratic oversight, democratic oversight. So the most important priorities are for the next year. So finalizing the selection of the HAD as Special Anti-Corruption uh, Prosecutor's Office for the efficient uh, functioning of this body and selection new HAD, which will be conducted next year. This is judicial reform, which is on the stage of implementation, implementing not the one which is included in national annual plan, but the one which is uh, carried out. So uh, cleansing the ASICs Commission and uh, and selection selection among the candidates uh, with impeccable of people with impeccable reputation and uh, forming a new new qualification commission of judges. This is reform of security service of Ukraine, which uh, goes beyond the scope of uh, the law, which is in the parliament right now, and it should be accompanied by uh, adoption the amendments to our criminal code, which will also uh, also will do strip uh, security service of law enforcement functions maybe i will make a pause here because i took too much time thank you very much olena and uh, to sum up that meeting we plan to send everyone who uh, took part in this meeting uh, the text which okay, we can work with as well as uh, at the end we will send uh, all the questionnaires based uh, on the format i will uh, come to that later and i would like to give the uh, the word the floor to roman kubida a leading expert of the center of legal and political reforms i was asked uh, roman Talking about annual national annual plan, I, I I believe that it performs two functions. This is the tool of your Atlantic integration on the one hand, and on the other hand, it's a tool of accelerating the reforms within Ukraine. So, uh, are the, are these functions uh, carried really carried out? I well, there are a lot of uh, doubts about that, and a lot of them were voiced because this is a really a, a trivial tool for advancing the reforms in Ukraine. And a good example here is a judicial reform because it goes beyond the scope of this uh, in, uh, this tool as annual national plan and uh, changes and amendments to the judicial institutions. And also, uh, we have to pay attention, Th thank you very much, to the Metro for explaining how this uh, national plan is drafted and monitored. And I believe it has some deficiencies, especially in timeline, especially when uh, annual and uh, annual national plan uh, is brought to life uh, half a year later, and the, and the government is supposed to report at at the very beginning of the next year, so just in half of a year after that uh, program was commissioned. So it uh, enables me to say that uh, we, we didn't have enough time for implementing it. And on the other hand, we can cheat uh, on that because when we look at the plan of events, uh, 
for annual national plan. I, I have an impression that ministries, they put their uh, daily agenda there, like monitoring, uh, some disciplinary action, everything which they have every year, and such things they can report uh, that everything was uh, completed, everything was implemented. Unfortunately, this timeline and the way it is prepared which envisages uh, the secondary importance issues, but not key issues, it uh, brings more harm. So participation of, uh, of civic society can help in setting the priorities, and maybe we can have a, a less uh, smaller number of priorities, but better. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your remarks, Roman. Yes, ANP is simultaneously an instrument of our integration into NATO and instrument of internal changes. And Olena also mentioned uh, that a clear deadline uh, for uh, visa-free regime can help us with uh, advanced reform. And I believe that our our plan can also be a good instrument for bringing about changes in our country. And also, I'd like to make some remarks as for the NEP. And obviously, it doesn't matter how critically we treat it, this format is approved by NATO, is, uh, is useful too, and uh, and strategic goals and tasks which are included in that plan. Maybe, maybe, and they take it as example from previous annual national plans. We have uh, uh, the problem on the level of executing it, of implementing it, of carrying out carrying out the tasks uh, suggested by ministries. So here comes a question, can we work with these tasks in order to make them more efficient, basing on the structure as for the strategic goals which are included in A and P? As far as I understand it, that structure is quite logical, but, uh, but the problem is on details. Thank you very much, all the participants, for joining our talk. And I would like to give a feedback uh, uh, from the Metro. And also, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Kvit and Mr. Senenko to join us in final remarks. Thank you very much. I'd like to to reflect on, uh, on Olena's uh, talk as uh, for exclusiveness of uh, so excited from this process, process. Yes, there is a timeline, and we saw this scheme. There is no place, unfortunately, for uh, advisory groups for civic society. But uh, within our provisions uh, of uh, national and uh, national plan, it is said that they, it it is possible to engage uh, uh, civic society and NGOs into that uh, f shaping, and we should uh, take a good use of that provision. And let me. Let me remind you that uh, logically annual national plan consists of uh, of some chapters, some blocks, and each block is further subdivided into strategic goal, and each strategic goal further subdivided into uh, the tasks and. Uh, uh, and tasks uh, that subdivided into events. So when we talk about five uh, blocks, we if I'm not mistaken, we have 84 uh, goals, which uh, later transform into uh, 903 events. That's uh, what uh, we got uh, from uh, as a result from our evaluation of ANP and implementing NAP, which we have recently done. And uh, I have a suggestion. We suggest everyone uh, to engage in uh, shaping the key reforms we uh, through the logic of uh, of uh, drafting a and p to 
to elaborate uh, strategic goals, uh, tasks, and events. And we invite everyone to join us in this effort. And and we leave address for feedback and ask everyone to engage in that uh, uh, in that uh, process up to the uh, 30th of December this year. And then we will consolidate all the proposals and suggestions uh, together with the expert, the pool of experts. And I believe that we will shape though and design those suggestions using uh, using that provision of in, for engaging uh, civil society into the drafting of ANP and uh, later we will uh, submit that to all the uh, main uh, parts for including it into the future ANP and I'd like to also to say that we uh, suggest that we have next meeting on the 12th of January after the, getting all the suggestions we will process them all and uh, on the 12th of January we can together make a decision as for uh, submitting all the suggestions which we have which we will have discussed uh, uh, alongside with uh, uh, civic society, a pool of experts, to the cabinet of ministers, and as for the deadline, so cabinet of ministers uh, is supposed to submit uh, that to the president for endorsement uh, before the 31st of December, so we will have half of uh, uh, January for the suggestions, and it should be the period between the 15th uh, 31st of January, uh, 31st of uh, December, 31st of January. So we have some time. Well, uh, we we are not we do not expect to have a, a huge uh, amount of uh, proposals, but uh, we seek uh, not to have it like big numbers in 100 pages, but maybe one, two or three pages, but with the key issues which can definitely bring us closer to admission to NATO. And now I'd like to give the floor to Anton Senenko. Uh, and you as a member of Public Oversight Council to give your insight and your feedback on everything you have already heard. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. For me, this meeting is really important. But in, in my case, when I have read critical a review well then i understood that the problems with ANP considered they also deal with educational and research and scientific sphere and also we heard a lot of issues related to courts and judicial field and engaging experts for assessing and evaluating a and b and uh, in this in this way we can gain some trust on behalf on of, of the public general public and and i believe that more experts will uh, definitely engage in this process i will be looking forward to that and now uh, sir he quit uh, the floor is yours i was us yeah definitely thank you very much ostap and uh, all the distinguished guests and uh, participants of this discussion it was really interesting to listen to listen expert uh, ex, ex, expertise and because I see that it was really good and on my half on my behalf I, I, I'd, I'd like I, I didn't deal with the military field but there are specificities of fields do we include that for, for, for example there is specificity of uh, the community of journalists and there is absolutely different uh, specificity for prosecutors and military so I believe that this environment is more friendly is more open to those problems which we are discussing and we, we should have have more agents of influence in that environment. 
who can be people with some progressive views, especially relating to NATO and to performing some duties which are in doubt with them and invested in them. And we would like to have a contact with those fields, not having us like uh, uh, voicing our uh, suggestions, uh, proposals, but also to have a good working contact with the representatives of each field. This is really important. Uh, in, and let me make an example. When we just uh, uh, first gathered with uh, our group of Public Oversight Council, I made an example when accidentally we somehow engaged and our, our agency for uh, assurance of quality of education was in, uh, and we also checked how how ready they are to to prepare their students and cadets according to NATO standards, and 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 mostly these requirements are met, and and one group studied how how the training goes in the in main four educational institutions and they said that this educational institution can prepare according to NATO st standards. We asked really good questions, especially as for the education, because we have people within NATO who can who understand the importance of it and this cooperation is really fruitful because one thing is policy so pol politics and how uh, politicians deal with these problems or maybe they just want to waffle that to water them down and the other thing is a contact direct contact with the field and for this topic maybe we have to pay special attention to you thank you very much uh, thank you Sergio. so public oversight council as for me is is the platform where experts can uh, meet representatives of the field, uh, a special field, and with uh, representatives of politics, but not policy, with representatives of governmental uh, coalition. Uh, so that's uh, how we see our function as a moderator, which uh, can help Ukraine to get closer to NATO membership. Summing up, I'd like to ask our members, uh, does anyone of you has, uh, does anyone have uh, a remark or feedback to the statements uh, which have been voiced today? Or can we sum up and finish? Or some, or maybe there is someone who wants to add something important which we should mention. I see one, I see Ihor Kors. Uh, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. I'd like to pay attention to uh, to everything which have been mentioned by participants, by panelists, and I totally agree with them, especially in the part when, uh, besides evaluating of the program, we also have to uh, analyze program and the uh, implementation of this program. I analyzed the uh, provisions on the, the drafting of the annual national plan uh, for every year and and I'd like to focus on the requirements which are set for uh, the elaboration of this uh, program. It should be uh, it should be concise. It should uh, it should be within some time limit. And when we analyze the contemporary program, it 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 it, it does not uh, meet the, these requirements because every every block should should include a description of reforms which are carried out in our state while it's not included. It's We have something chaotic, a huge chaotic uh, set of tasks. It, it was already, it has been already mentioned. So it's better to have a, a less number, but more qualitative number. So I s totally agree with the idea of uh, taking bigger part in uh, 
drafting annual national plan in order to include only those things which we cannot postpone and it shouldn't be dissolved with some uh, second importance events which dissolve the program itself and do not uh, uh, give uh, the answer whether or it achieves its main strategic goal or not. Thank you very much. It was a really good uh, remark and I believe it's necessary to prepare our amendments not only on concrete uh, gist and content, content and also on format of annual national plan. Thank you. So, thank you very much every participant who took part. Maybe we have more uh, remarks. I don't see I don't see I don't see any. So let us uh, uh, sum up our meeting today. Thank you again. Thank you very much all the panelists uh, all uh, for sharing your opinion, your critical reviews. We we will send to all of you a Google form where you can put your suggestions as for the key changes and amendments to annual national plan of Ukraine NATO and we will try to make a document which will include five maximum seven key priorities uh, from the proposals which we will uh, additionally discuss on the 12th of uh, uh, January and after that we will uh, conduct the advocacy of them in order to have a cabinet of minister of including them in the annual national plan for 2022. We will also talk about the cabinet of minister publicly report as for how annual national plan was carried out, implemented in 2021. And it should not be just one-sided way. So we would like to have also a possibility to ask questions and receive answers. As it has been mentioned, in order to uh, have our proposals included for the next year and also to coordinate and work through uh, national annual national plan for 2023rd year, taking consideration everything how it was uh, implemented in 2021 and uh, in uh, February we will talk how it was done into uh, and will uh, in the previous year and we will also talk about uh, about the the development of a new one in order to include some safeguards in order to stop uh, violating the deadlines. Thank you very much for participating in this meeting. Ukraine will be a full-fledged member of NATO. Thank you very much and see you online in uh, on uh, the 12th of January. Ой, 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 ой. Чекай.